All right, welcome back and for our final conversation as we mark the second anniversary of the Leki massacre and the NSAS protests of 2020 in Nigeria, um, one year after the National Economic Council chaired by Nigeria's Vice President Yamiya Shibajo uh, directed states to pay compensation to victims of police brutality in the country. Indications show that many states have yet to comply with the directive. Now, only Lagos State, Oshun, Ekiti, and the Federal Capital Territory have complied with the NEC resolution. This is happening as activists are saying that they will hold rallies uh, to commemorate the second anniversary of the ANSARS protests at the Leki Togate and other parts of Nigeria today. About 51 civilians, 11 police officers, and seven soldiers reportedly died in the unrest while scores of protesters uh, were detained. Uh, consequently, uh, the presidency of Nigeria and the state governments set up judicial panels of inquiry uh, to investigate the cases of police brutality and extrajudicial killings, amongst others. Uh, following the order, uh, 28, 28 states of, and the federal capital territory uh, set up panels, while states like Yobe State, Bono State, Jigawa State, Kano State, Kebi State, and Sakota State, as well as Zamfara State, uh, failed to do so. Over 2,500 petitions were submitted to the panels across the nation. And uh, two years on, however, the deadly protests, after the deadly protests, many states have yet to implement the panel's recommendations, including the compensations for victims of violence. It's a really sad situation. Now, joining us uh, uh, to discuss this uh, issue of justice for victims via the judicial panels, I'm glad to say we have uh, a political analyst at GK Chud. Uh, on the line. Achike Chul, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, good morning. Uh, what's your assessment of the, the treatment of victims of police brutality in Nigeria, especially with the existence of these uh, judicial panels of inquiry? Um, for Lagos State is a case in point that was really well publicized and followed after the Judicial Panel of Inquiry submitted its report in which it described uh, the incident at Lekki as, Le at Lekki as a massacre. Uh, the government set up a, a committee, another committee, to produce a white paper. So uh, give us your thoughts on what has transpired uh, after the various panels concluded their work. Yeah, well, you know, it was um, uh, the reason why uh, the the NSAS uh, saga attracted so much um, national national uh, you know attention and led to the unprecedented uh, social upheaval, if I would describe it as such, as social uh, protest and angst by the civilian populace, especially the youths. Um, you know the 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 reason that, you know although like uh, some parts of the north. I felt that uh, they have a different kind of issue. They are tackling insecurity and not necessarily police uh, brutality. And that's why in your report, you did say that uh, many states in the north did not set up the, uh, you know, uh, judicial panels of inquiry, you know, inquiry uh, into police brutality. Neither did they recommend their compensation. And so, um, it is very, very clear that um, it was uh, a situation that attracted uh, the interest of uh, Nigerians and their cross. All walks of life, and then uh, even the international community, it was as serious as that, uh, because the situation was unprecedented for the youthful populace uh, to who have hitherto been quite apolitical uh, to, and then people would say lay back and then do side and passive for them to have acted in unison in such a spontaneous manner across uh, many parts of the country. I think it was unprecedented and in a way very very welcome. Uh, but again, you know, it started as um, uh, a protest against uh, police uh, repression and police brutality. Uh, but it quickly moved beyond that, and people began to ask, and it became political because people were now asking other questions: Why are we where we are? Why are things not working the way they should work in a country that has been richly blessed with them? You know, uh, with the human population, most of them youths, and then uh, with a uh, lot of uh, natural and mineral resources. Why is there so much corruption? Why is the police, even the security forces, not being treated well? Uh, which has also led to some extent to the, some of the abuses that they are suffering. So they began to make political, you know, uh, statements and demands. And all of these things were for the betterment of uh, the country. 
and then we now had the response from the government, not just you know uh, um, using the army and then especially the army and the police had to shoot into the crowd and then create that or cause that massacre that took place. So it became contentious whether there was actually a massacre because the, gov the government, the federal and the other state governments, especially the state government, uh, you know, began to say that uh, actually they were not, there are no casualties in terms of fatalities, but you had people that were injured. And so there are all kinds of stories. But I think the general belief is that there was a massacre. Uh, you don't turn off the light at uh, the Lekki toll gate and then bring in the soldiers who use light bullets. And you are ultimately again and shot sporadically and indiscriminately to the crowd to tell us that uh, you know there was no uh, you know fatality. But beyond that, like you said, the Lagos State Government set up a judicial you know panel of inquiry, and Lagos was the epicenter. So there was so much concentration on the, that the judicial panel, and they acted. You know, people would say, contrary to maybe government expectation, they showed a lot of bravery. The female judge, I can't remember herself, her name now, who headed that panel, was 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 fantastic, and uh, she was looking beyond even the uh, 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 whatever. I mean, she was looking, and she she wanted to write her name in gold, obviously, and she did well because they came out with a report that indicted uh, the state government that set up that panel in the first place, and then the federal authorities. You know, and ultimately, that was why. So the strange thing about the whole thing was that you now see the government that set up that inquiry now fighting with the content of uh, the report made by that inquiry. This was a panel that you set up. You chose the very right people because, and the government said it, the Lagos State government, that these were people of integrity who could do a very good job. And at the end of the day, they had done, they did the job. And because that job did not favor you, you decided to denigrate and to ridicule the findings of that panel. So that is where, you know, uh, we are. So obviously the president, the vice president is saying, yes, states have a duty to pay compensation. And the vice president is right. But are we, what compensation has been paid by the federal authorities? And if you look at it, the fact is that the police institution, for instance, which was in the eyes of the storm, is a, you know, a, an institution of the federal government, not of the state governments. You know, and so they must also bear some level of responsibility. Then the operational areas of this police, you know, that is a federal institution, are within the states. They operate within the ambits of the states. So the states themselves cannot isolate themselves from the activities of uh, these uh, police people. You know, and then uh, at the same time, the federal government cannot. So you, you need to have a synergy. You need to have both taking responsibility for what happens. So, so let's talk oh, about yes, police, yeah. let's talk about taking responsibility. You talked about the need for compensation to be paid, but how can compensation be paid where you have some states? I mean, about seven states uh, who didn't really have a panel because we understand that after all of this happened, uh, in response to you know the recommendation or the concerns of these protesters, uh, Neck actually had said that you know state uh, state should actually establish a judicial uh, panel. And so across the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT, one would say, but you have like seven states with no panel. And you also have, on the other hand, another seven states who actually had a panel, but, you know, uh, did not submit their report. I'd like you to share your thoughts on this. If, you know, uh, the response of the government was really honest, yeah. Well, I think it is obvious that uh, uh, both federal and state authorities were not exactly uh, interested in ensuring that justice is done, you know, to victims. And the, the reality, uh, and, and it is, uh, you ask yourself why, and the reason may not be far-fetched. The reality of our, you know, situation in this country is that you have political actors who have been le elected by the people and who are being subsidized or being paid have been taken care of by, by the monies that belong to the general public. But paradoxically, they are not exactly interested, uh, you know, in the welfare of the people that put them in power. And so this is why, and in so many other aspects of our national life, we see the irresponsibility and insensitivity of political actors, elected, you know, public officials to the, uh, you know, to the to issues of uh, governance. The fact that uh, we, we, we have a country that is blessed, like I said, with a you know, vast population that could be put to productive use, and then vast you know, arrays of uh, uh, natural and uh, mineral resources, and yet the country is wallowing in uh, grinding poverty, gives you an indication that there is no connection between 
and the people and those who are supposed to govern them and provide according to constitutional provision, provide for the safety and welfare of the people. So the response to the people, for instance, to the victims of the NSAS, is simply a continuation of the irresponsibility and insensitivity of governments over time. You know, but, you know, yes, I agree that, that uh, some states did not set up a panels of inquiry. But what of those states that set up panels of inquiry? I think we should start from them. What are their reports like? And we have not seen reports from some of these states. Look, you know, uh, the police you know, have almost like forever brutalized the Nigerian people for a very, very long time. Everybody knows it. One is not saying that, look, it is something that is peculiar to the Nigerian Security Forces authorities. We see this even in the uh, developed countries of, of the world, where you have some levels of police brutality from time to time. You know, but that uh, but we should be concerned more with what has happened in Nigeria and how to address some of these issues. So, and, and since the government in general terms have been able to agree that, yes, you know, our police forces have been guilty of, of a police, you know, serious, you know, series of a police brutality and the maltreatment of Nigeria of citizens. Then we should also, they should also make sure that the people first, who have been guilty of the most egregious crimes of police brutality, should be brought to book, should be held accountable. They must not be allowed to get away, you know, with the atrocities that they have been committing, you know, against the people. And then for those people that have been clearly identified as having, because that was why they also asked them to bring evidence of you know, uh, actions of police officers against them, and then to also make sure that immediately that they discipline are compensated, uh, you know, and, and, and I think that this is you know, what we need to do. Because if you want to put the past behind us, then you must make sure that you cross the, uh, the T's and dot the I. Uh, it's, it's very, very important. So compensation is, uh, is, is a key element of uh, reconciliation. Okay, okay. Uh, 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 I'll ask you two questions in one. Uh, before we go, you've said compensation is a key element of, uh, of, of, of bringing closure to this. Um, but the argument would be, is compensation enough? Lagos State government ended up paying, of course, after the federal government directed states to pay compensation. Some states like Waibon State, State and Benue State said it's not the duty of the state governments to pay compensation for uh, police brutality. But Lagos State paid out 420 million naira, while uh, Oshun State paid out... Um, uh, 53.2 million naira as presented by uh, Governor Oyetola to 13 victims. Uh, in May, National Human Rights Commission, probably called the Abuja Panel, uh, paid 439 million naira. Uh, the state government disbursed 21.5 million naira. But, but you rightly said that the Lagos uh, State uh, White Paper ripped apart, you know, I'm not quoting you now, but they tore to shreds the NSAS Panel report, um, accepting just 11 of the 32 recommendations. And they the, the, the white paper went on to say that they, the, there were inconsistencies, inconsistencies and contradictions with the, in the entire JPI report. And the governor uh, and the state government threw that white paper basically saying that they disagree with things like people dying, all right, at, on, at Lekki Togit, whereas the, the PAN report, you know, said there were evidence, overwhelming evidence of, of killings. Now, the governor of Lagos State, sir, is, has say, said that uh, they are bringing closure to the painful episode you know, after presenting the white paper um, uh, uh, re report. Now, I'm asking you, is this really closure, having come up with a white paper that has basically rubbished the JPI report, having paid compensation, yes, you paid compensation, is it truly closure if those who are perpetrators of, number one, the lucky killings, are not identified and made to face justice, but those who ordered the killings, those who carried out the order, is there really closure, like Samolu has said, if they're no, not no, no, no. identified, not sorry, sir, sorry, sir, identified and made to face justice? Number one. Number two, if the perpetrators of, of, of police brutality for all these persons who have been identified and paid compensation are also not brought to book, that's number one. Number two, what should happen to the over 40 people who are still in prison as we speak, as identified by Amnesty International from the NSAS period till now? 40 Nigerians who participated in the protests are still unlawfully in prison. Yeah. Over let, let me, good. I mean, these are, these are wonderful uh, questions and observations. Let me start with the last. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, Nigerians are not going to 
uh, support anarchy. Nigerians are not going to support people who used the NSAS as a basis either to settle scores or to destroy uh, personal properties or to loot properties, if those things actually occurred. Uh, even, but at the same time, Nigerians will not tolerate a situation where people who exercise their fundamental right to dissent, you know, actually did that, and then the uh, civil authorities are holding them and incarcerating them for many months after that accident, incident had happened. You know, obviously, uh, you know, it is, it's a very funny uh, situation where you people are kept in cells or prisons awaiting trial. So if they have done anything, and then you need to provide evidence uh, into the law court that this person did this in flagrant violation of the laws of this country. And then you prove your case. If you prove your case and the court determines yes, that this person actually committed all these offenses, such a person you know, uh, can be sentenced. I don't think Nigerians will quarrel with that. But we will not allow or accept a situation where people who exercised their right to dissent are being incarcerated for no reason other than the angst and the malice. All, all right, so can you please quickly agents. quickly speak to bringing justice and make, bringing those who perpetrated the acts of uh, yes. uh, the mass to book? Just okay, very cool. shortly, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, uh, obviously, yeah, you, know, you cannot bring, have closure, and I agree with you. For as long as the people who committed these atrocities have not even accepted, if you look at uh, the, the, the South African Truth and Reconciliation you know, Commission, there was, there was acceptance by many of these people that they actually committed this. For those who committed murders, they actually committed murders. That's how you also bring closure to a matter. And then the issue now became, what do we do with these people? Do we forgive them? And so the victims are brought in to, to and they will be asked questions about what you think we should do. What kind of justice do you think we should make out to these people? Now that is critical. We All have right. not seen this. But what you saw right. is the, author the authorities denying what happened. Okay. You know, Jude, thank you so know. much. Thank you so much. I do apologize that we, we have to call it at that point. Uh, but we appreciate your time and uh, doing justice to this topic. Um, uh, we'll be back tomorrow with more on the program right here. But uh, we've had a quite an interesting conversation uh, as we mark the second anniversary of the Lekki Massacre. Uh, the conversation continues. I'm sure next year we'll be here by this time. My name is Kofi Bartel. Thanks for your time. And I am Messia Boko. Let's continue the conversation on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram with Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko once again. Have a great morning.